Here recently on Rick Beato's channel, Kirk Hammett of Metallica showed him his favorite exercise to do to warm up. And no, it's not wah pedal push-ups. It's this jazz chord relay that Joe Satriani taught him back in the day. It's like, you know, major chord. Wait, I don't know the jazz chord relay. Hold on, what, what's no the jazz does. chord relay? This is what they, this is what I'm showing you. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a really great exercise because it gets all four of your hand fingers moving on the fretboard, but I came up with a couple other variations on it that you can use to get your picking hand in shape and work on techniques like cross picking. Sweet picking. Economy picking. and two-way pick slanting. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Hey there kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Here recently on my Patreon page, one of my lovely and loyal supporters, John, asked me what I thought about Kirk Hammett's warm-up routine that he showed Rick Beato in their recent interview. I sat down and watched the entire thing, which is an absolutely fantastic watch. I highly recommend you guys check it out. And that exercise portion reminded me of a few things that I've been using for years to keep my chops in tip-top shape. It can be a really versatile workout if you know how to approach it, so I'm going to show you guys all the great variations you need to know in today's video. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today for even just a buck a month, you're going to get access to a ton of goodies like bonus videos, backing tracks, and so much more. This week, everybody who supports my channel is going to get access to downloadable tabs and practice tracks to go along with these exercises, and we can build your own perfect practice routine. Also, here recently, I uploaded a Patreon-exclusive video showing you guys a little trick that I learned to help combat my ADHD crazy brain and improve my practice habits. So you're going to want to check that one out. So don't delay. Sign up today. Gear-wise for today's video, I'm playing my lovely new Jackson Virtuoso into the EVH 5153 EL34. Now let's dig into these workouts. So that's the original jazz chord relay that Kirk showed Rick. Now this is just based around stair step kind of shapes on the top four strings of the guitar. So you're just going to play one, two, three, four from the D to the high E, and then just turn that shape inside out and play four, three, two, one from D to high E. So it's one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. And then you just move up a half step, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, three, four, five, six, six, five, four, three, and so on. You get the idea. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to be humming that Jim Jam Jubilee all day long. So musical. Yeah, not really. But this is a great one to warm up with on the couch, or maybe if you're backstage before a show and you can't really hear your guitar that well. It doesn't really matter that much, because you're just trying to get those fingers moving. So the interesting thing that's going on here is that the first and fourth fingers have to make the biggest jumps, going from D to E. And then the middle two fingers have to make the smaller jumps because it's going to be like G to B and then B to G every other shape. So I think this is a really great exercise because it gets you concentrate on making those different kinds of motions within the different segments of your hand. The big motions on the outside and the small precise movements on the inside fingers. As soon as I saw Kirk play that exercise, it reminded me of one that I picked up from John Petrucci's excellent Rock Discipline book that he put out 100 years ago, which is a really great book with warm-ups for like every major technique you could ever imagine. Definitely get that book. Now, I can't remember if I changed this over the years or if this is just how John did it, but this is the way that I've always practiced that exercise. As you 
can see it's the same thing, but different, using those stair step shapes and kind of going inside out every other time. But it moves up the neck a little bit differently. And again, maybe I changed that, or maybe this is the way it originally was, I don't know. But here's the idea. We'll talk about the picking techniques here in a second. But you're gonna play one, two, three, four, D to high E. Turn that shape inside out, so you play one, two, three, four on the way down. And then whatever the last note you played was, just move up one fret and do the same idea. But this time it's gonna be five, four, three, two, five, four, three, two. Okay, so we played one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, five, four, three, two. Now the same idea happens off this last note. Whatever the last note you played was, move up a fret. Three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, move up. Seven, six, five, four, seven, six, five, four, move up. Five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight. You get the idea. I like this approach because it has you slowly creeping up the neck and encourages you to keep a nice loose grip with the thumb, help you with those position shifts and stuff. Now the first variation here I want to show you guys is the cross picking one, where we're going to be alternate picking our way through this. So we're going to be playing down stroke, up stroke, down stroke, up stroke, down, up, down, up. Just continue that throughout the entire exercise. That cross picking technique is really essential if you want to master those super fast alternate picked arpeggios like John Petrucci and Steve Morris do. And you really got to focus on making kind of key turning motions with the pick like this. So your downstroke isn't just going down, it's kind of curving out. And then your upstroke isn't just going up, it's kind of curving up like this. So it's more like down, up, down, up as you go through this exercise. <laughs> Now kind of a cousin to this is taking the same exercise and using it to practice our sweep picking. Now this is going to be a little bit more straightforward. We're just going to go down, 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 and then change directions. Up, 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 up. Move up a fret. Down, 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 down. Up, 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 up. Down, 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 down. Up, 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 up. And so on. Notice with my picking hand here, I'm very slightly angling the pick depending on which direction the sweep is going. And it doesn't have to be extreme or anything like that. Just make it just enough so that there's a little bit of a break angle like that when you're going down, and a little bit of a break angle like this when we're going up. Check it out again from this angle. <laughs> Try to really make sure that there's no overlapping notes in there. Again, we're not sounding this out like it's a chord. You wanna just really gradually fill and empty every finger with that pressurizing energy as you go. So I'm not really thinking on, off, on, off, because that makes a lot of noise. I'm thinking full, empty, full, empty, full, empty, full, empty with every finger as I go through this on the left hand. Everybody focuses on the right hand when it comes to sweeping and stuff, but man, you gotta have that left hand control down and keep those notes from overlapping if you want those sweeps to sound more better. You can also reformat this exercise to work on your pick slanting skills, which are of course extremely important. For example, if you wanna work on your downwards pick slanting, where our pick is kinda of going down and into the strings and up and out of the strings, it's sort of an angle like this. This is kinda of my default playing style. If you take every note in that workout and just double it up, so you're playing down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. This is a perfect way to work on your downward pick sliding skills.
can't remember which Cynic song that's from. Anyway, if you watch my pick right here, you can really see what I'm talking about. I'm going down and in, up and out. Okay? It's that upwards escape that makes it easy to move to the next string back and forth. If you're into any of those bands like Senec or Mastodon that do a lot of that double picked kind of stuff in the riffing, you have to master this technique. Now the inverse of that would be upwards pick slanting, where our pick is going up and into the strings and down and out of the strings. This is the playing style of guys like Vinnie Moore. Now if you take everything I just told you and bizarro world it, flip it and reverse it, Missy Elliott style, depending on your outlook, you can uh, work on your upwards pick slanting skills at the same time. So instead of starting on a downstroke, start on an upstroke instead. Up, down, 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 up, down. Again, same exercise, just a totally different picking method. And again, watch down the barrel right here, and you'll notice how that picking hand is going up and into the strings, and down and out of the strings, which is what makes the string changes possible, because my hand is kind of out here away from the strings. Now there's two other variations we can do on here to work on two of the most important and difficult picking techniques. First one I'm going to talk about here is economy picking. What I want you guys to do is to triple up on every note. So every note gets picked three times. Think of it as a triplet for every note. Triple it, 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 triple it. Like that right there. Now the cool thing about this is due to the, the math and magic of how this works out, we can downwards economy pick on our way up the exercise and upwards economy pick on our way down the exercise. So every one of these strings, you're just going to play down, up, down. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. And as you do that connecting down stroke, down, up, down, down, like that right there, what I want you guys to focus on is not making a downstroke then another downstroke. I want you to make a downstroke that connects those two strings. Do you see that right there, how my pick kind of falls through and rests on the G string? And then I just push it through when it's time to play that note. This is really important if you want to get your economy picking in check. It's called a rest stroke. Now after you play up the exercise like that, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, you're going to reverse everything and go up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then just move up the position and down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, the entire way through. And again, whenever you're descending down and using the upwards economy picking, you want to try to do that rest stroke thing there too. Up, down, resting, upstroke. Up, down, resting, upstroke. Up, down, resting, upstroke. And so on. And again, you got to change those directions really fluidly if you're playing up this exercise. Let's see it from that down the barrel angle. Just a really excellent way to work on your economy picking. And if you're working on this with those practice tracks, it's gonna keep your groove on point too. This is the main thing that most players miss with their economy picking, is their groove is shot. They're not very rhythmic and groovy going da da do da da do da da do da Sweet picking for a lot of players kind of gets away from them and they just play it as fast as they can because they're kind of slipping through the strings, you know? Really concentrate on making this thing groove when you're doing your economy picking. Practice tracks will definitely help with that. And the last one that I want to talk about here is the most challenging, the two-way pick slanting variation that we have on this exercise. Now this is just basically going to be doing the triple note thing like we did with the economy picking, only we're going to alternate pick the entire thing non-stop, like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, 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 down, up
There's a really challenging thing that happens when you combine alternate picking with a three note per string figure and it's two way pick slanting. A good way to approach this is to think about the way that a violin player has to kind of manipulate that bow as they play, right? Their neck is very curved on that instrument and to get to the low strings they kind of have to angle it this way. To get to the high strings they have to angle it this way, right? They can't just hold the bow in one position and expect to hit the strings. You kind of have to manipulate it. Our picking hand is very much the same way because if you think about the math going on right here, the first set of notes will terminate on a downstroke. Down, up, down. The next string will be the total opposite. Up, down, up. It'll terminate on an upstroke, right? So we have a downstroke change and an upstroke change as we go along through this exercise. It just repeats that over and over. And to make that happen, again, you gotta take that violin bow kind of technique into consideration. So notice the way that my pick slanting and stuff will change. I'm just gonna kind of flip the wrist a little bit here to make it easier to get out and away from the strings off that downstroke and out and away from the strings off that upstroke whenever it's time to change strings. I'm gonna make this a little bigger than it needs to be just to make it visible for camera, but it should look something like this. As I do that, those kind of rolls of the wrist, I can kind of feel this one contact point at the back kind of corner of my palm. And my hand is kind of pivoting off that. I don't feel like I'm so much rotating my entire arm up and down like this. I kind of feel like that little bump at the side of the palm is what's allowing me to roll from upwards pick slant to downward pick slant. I'm just kind of pivoting off the old nubbin back here, as my buddy Andy Wood calls it. So I've got that kind of resting, you know, around the D or G string and just kind of pivoting like that to work that two-way pick slanting thing. Vital technique if you want to become a master alternate picker. There's a lot of young dudes now that have totally nailed this already and it's scary. I'm very much a late bloomer to this, so still a work in progress over here for your boy. But that's gonna be a really great thing for you guys to practice with this exercise. That two-way pick slanting thing is so important, I just cannot overstate it. So be sure to work that variation out as well. So there you go guys, a deep dive into Kirk Hammett's warm up routine and all the variations you can use to become a more better shredder today. And on the subject of Kirk, I feel like that guy has been an easy target of the guitar ridicule community for a really long time. And I just don't think he deserves it. So if you guys want to turn the comments section into a Hammett bash session, I shan't be a part of it. I think he's a really great player and he's super extremely humble. Watch that, that Rick Beato interview and you can just see how much passion he still has for the guitar. The guy is still that same, you know, young guy, teenager, whatever, that picked up the guitar however many years ago. He's just as excited about it now as he was back then. And here's the thing too, and I hadn't even really thought about this until my good buddy Brent Fox pointed it out. But he made an observation about Hammett one day that really made me step back when it comes to all the, you know, the negativity that he seems to generate with the online guitar community. What Brent said that really struck a chord with me is that Kirk has never claimed to be anything that he's not. He's never said, oh man, my solo is on this new record. I'm reinventing the guitar. I'm your new god, little boys. I'm the greatest guitar player ever. Kirk has never said that once ever. The guy is fully aware of what kind of guitar player he is and I love that. I would much rather have somebody that's totally humble and having a great time with it and doing their thing than somebody who's an amazing player and just is claiming to you know be the dang da Vinci of the guitar. So yeah anyway I think Kirk is a super chill humble guy that deserves to be praised for that rather than bashed for whatever it is that people don't like about his playing. Thank you guys as always for watching. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold right here. And be sure to support my channel over on that Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. That's where you're gonna get the tabs and the practice tracks to go along with all of these exercises. That way you can become a more better shredder today. So don't delay. Sign up now over at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Thanks as always for watching. Now get away from the computer and go play some guitar. Let's click it. More picking.